And now a message from our sponsor. Hey everybody, it's Bootleg Captain, Captain Bootlegs here. Yeah! If you're like me, I bet you're enjoying this Toys, Toys on Tap, Tap podcast. I am enjoying it, it's very nice. But did you know you can enjoy it more just by joining that Patreon? Oh, I did not know that. There are so many cool perks available on the Patreon for you. There's <laughs> and also <laughs> and and wow, that's really a lot of stuff if you ask Bootleg Captain. Captain I don't Bootleg. understand. There were noises I couldn't hear with the person. So join today to support Toys on Tap podcast and Bootleg Art Toys. But if you're not in a position to join the Patreon, head on over to Apple iTunes and review and subscribe. That helps out the channel as well. Okay, I'll go rate it, I guess. And remember, listen to Toys, Toys on, on Tap. Tap. Captain Bootleg, the bootleg captain sent you. Why did he keep referring to himself in the third Can person? I stop with the stupid voice now? I'm not sure why you made me want to sound like a pirate. Oh, so that was a fake voice. Oh, yucko! I didn't realize it was just a pretend voice. Oh. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hi, great, thanks. Nice, nice, good morning. Is it early there for you? Uh, it's 8.30, so I just started my day okay. <laughs> and an hour ago, so it's pretty fun. Sweet, fine. well, welcome to Toys on Tap. I'm mm -hmm. super excited that you wanted to come on and do an interview. Yeah, that was uh, a great opportunity, yeah, thanks. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Hitoshi. Uh, uh, my name is Hitoshi. I run a toy uh, brand called High Toys right now. I just started uh, making toys and selling toys recently. I just launched this April and I'm like gradually starting to sell toys and it's kind of like a, my side business so it's not a really fast improvement but it's like moving gradually ahead. Yeah and so and you look pretty young. Are you uh, how old are you? <laughs> I was born in 1990. I'm like oh. 32 years old right now. Oh. Well, I look young, but I'm not that young. <laughs> I, <can say. laughs> I was also yeah. born in 1990, so that's good to see. Oh, really? Wow, great. Yeah. yeah. So it's good to see a 90s kid coming up. So you, growing up in the 90s, that's like the big part of toys. Um, tell me what it was like growing up. Did you have a lot of toys? Did you collect toys? What was that like? What's it like in Japan? Mm, mm, uh, I need to say that I was like also raised in the United States. Like uh, I was born in Japan in 1990, but I moved to uh, United States uh, in Pennsylvania in like 1997. So from like uh, elementary school, first grade to third grade. I was born, I was growing in the United States. So I have kind of a mixture of the culture of toys, like the Japanese toys in yeah. the United States. I mean, the Western toys. But my, my most, well, I would say Pokemon was the biggest. Yeah. <laughs> like monsters and characters and stuff. And also in Japan, there was all those Gundam, those robot toys. And also, there was a mini race, racing car called Mini Yonku. I'm not sure how it's called in English, okay. but it's like a small racing circuit car toy. I was building those a lot. And also, I was really passionate. I was having more, a lot of passion in building Legos myself. I still build Legos myself. Nice. Too. Yeah. So, those were the main things. Awesome. And also, those animes. Yeah. In Japan... I first watched like uh, not all those Pokemon. I, I actually I started watching Pokemon in the United States, not in Japan. So I was like really amazed about this huge thing coming from Japan, like amazing my friends and having a conversation with the Japanese culture with my uh, school kids in the United States was really uh, like cool mm -hmm. and that made me a really opportunity to have more conversation with friends in school like i was really shy when i first lived in the united states i couldn't yeah. speak a lot of english but that the anime content made me connection to my friends and those uh, communities so it was a great uh, op i mean great cool culture coming in how long were yeah. you in the united states for uh, I was in like uh, from seven years old to ten years old, so like around three years. Okay, yeah. and then you moved back to Japan. And... Oh yeah, I moved back to Japan. Okay, and so what was that transition going back and forth? Was it easy? Uh, well, in language-wise, it was difficult. I mean, I lost 
some of the Japanese kanji characters while I was in the United States.、Yeah. I needed to study hard to catch up the Japanese school friends. But,、um, well, other than that, I was like also going to Japanese、uh, culture schools in weekends when I was in the United States. So I still had like Japanese、uh, community or cultural input for me. So I was keeping up a lot of topics with friends. So, talking to friends was not that difficult. But yeah, language a little. Yeah, there was a little struggle going back and forth. Yeah.、So. Um, being, I know that the toy scene is different in Japan.、Mm. Growing up, can you describe what that was like? What is the toy scene in Japan versus in the Western? Ah,、uh, I see. Interesting question. Yeah, like. Well, <laughs> the first impact is the, that the quarter machine you have in the United States and the capsule machine in Japan, the cost is like four times higher in Japan. It's like $1 <laughs> at least you need to pay.、Yeah. And like these days, it's getting more expensive. It's like 500 yen, let's say、like、$5 or like between $3 to $5 in Japan to buy one capsule right now. But I always remember that a quarter machine only requires me 25%, uh, 25 cents、mm-hmm. to collect all those numbers of toys.、And、I remember that ninja toys, ninja minifigures, I could, was able to collect with all those quarter machines. So the cost is extremely, <laughs> from my experience, I feel the Japanese toys are more experience, I mean, expensive.、Mm-hmm. Even the loose Legos. Lego kits, it's like much expensive in Japan. Yeah. So I always wanted to buy in the United States. So yeah, I miss that kind of opportunity. Are they called,、uh, the word is、um, a capsule machine, but there's a word that's used that you use on Instagram. Is it gacha gacha?、Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, gacha gacha is like a very common way of saying that、uh, machine in Japan. I think it's coming from one. Company's、uh, product name,、okay. Gacha Bachka or Gacha Pon. There are several sayings. But yeah, Gacha Gacha is like it's、uh, expressing the sound of the machine works. It's like you roll it and it sounds like Gacha Gacha. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's how it's called. <laughs>、uh, you were talking about the, the, you were going to continue on the differences between the US and Japan.、Mm, uh, yeah. It, Yeah, in terms of toys, I really enjoy the Jap- Japanese toys, the way I built myself and enjoy myself. Like all those uh, mini uh, racing cars and also those Gundam、uh, robot、mm-hmm. plastic model kits. I really love those, and also I love Lego.、Uh, other than that, I couldn't find much of、uh, those build myself uh, kits, uh, especially uh, designed for kids. like... You find plastic model kits from like Star Wars、uh, spacecrafts, but those are like really extremely difficult to make. It's for adults, so I couldn't find much that in the United States market. But、uh, what I really enjoyed in the United States was that those action figures. I remember having some、uh, action characters, those muscular characters in the United States. Compared to Japan, there's not like those really muscular action figures in Japan. There's more like、uh, cute monsters、yeah. or、uh, some like、uh, more skinnier、uh, anime figures. And yeah, that comparison was really interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know much about the collector、um, culture. Uh, in Japan, with toys and things. But I've seen、um, some cafes with a bunch of bootleg toys and、um, seen like a bunch of、uh, kaiju and safubi toys mm. everywhere. Um, mm. Did you ever collect toys growing up?、Mm, actually, I didn't have a great opportunity to, I mean, a huge opportunity or <laughs> my budget. To collect a lot of toys in my youth. So I think that I'm wanting more and more to collect these days. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember having a lot of、uh, Gundam plastic model figures. It's really cheap, it's like less than 1,000 yen, $10. You can buy an easy kit and build on your own, and you gather it on your window side or anywhere. 
that was my first collection, I guess. And also my collection was already into the digital contents, like those Pokemon. Yeah. I like collected all the 151 Pokemon in the first uh, green version or something. And I think that was my first collection. It wasn't a really physical uh, goods I collected in the first thing. Yeah. When you were building, uh, so I don't know much about Gundams. Uh, do you have to mm. paint them, or do they? Do you have to like glue and all those types of models, or do they just all click together? Uh, it just clicks together. Gundam models are really uh, easy to make. Okay. You need to snip it off from those uh, the frames first, but after that, you just have to put the holes together and like snap it together, and you don't need much. Uh, you don't need glue at all. And coloring, if you really want to do it, you could color, but for the easiest way. There's always a sticker coming together mm -hmm. to color up some of the body parts or those weapons. Uh, and yeah, but you know, there's a more like intense way to build Gundam or those plastic models, like not only for Gundams. People will use glue or will uh, try to erase those, uh, how do you say, those splits on between the body parts. Oh, they okay. try to erase it off or, yeah, they do those intense coloring, and yeah, yeah. I think there's more and more, uh, like, there's more people creating original toys uh, than, I mean, there's more people making Gundams instead of making original toys in Japan. I think they're pure, like, just enjoying creation, but not selling those models. Yeah. So I think that's really interesting. Not all the people making toys or enjoying making toys are going into the market in Japan. Yeah. What made you... So I'm in love with your toys. The Those little... They're incredible. Um, I already bought my set, so I'm excited for them to come over here. Um, what made you want to create or start making toys... And then how did you settle on those? Well, it was a really a great um, coincidence, actually. I had the opportunity first. Well, I, actually, uh, my work on my wife is working as an art school teacher, uh, art class teacher for uh, kindergarten or elementary school kids. And she has just uh, started to rent a small uh, classroom near our house. So we had a place, we have a place in the first thing. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do something together with my wife. And I wanted to have my son included in that project. So I decided to open a toy store myself so that uh, I can like place those, that gacha gacha machine uh, on her, uh, in front of her uh, like art class and had my son be included in selling and making toys together with me. Uh, to have that like well interesting project together and also I wanted to make a toy myself all the time so I took this opportunity as much as I could to start doing this and the first thing uh, the toy I made uh, I'm making uh, I'm calling it button right now uh, button is like a uh, button toy mm -hmm. it's really a simple naming but I wanted to like launch this as quickly and like uh, easiest step for me. So I chose to use 3D printer, which I already owned uh, for my hobby. So I decided to make one toy with a 3D printer. And the shape came out uh, like pretty like with the use of a 3D printer. So it couldn't have a uh, like really uh, how do you say those complex, uh, complex uh, joints or uh, form of all those like monsteric? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't own those like laser uh, printer. It's like a FDM printer, so it needs to be a simple form. Mm -hmm. And I was looking into Pinterest and finding out what I what like amuses me was that those mechanical faces and robot skins and all those like interface uh, thing. It really uh, fascinated me, and also the Game Boys from my youth, and all those PlayStation and gaming devices, gaming interfaces, and all those like um, designs and like inspirations came to me, and I formed it into one like tiny robot form. I 
like recomposed all those like fascinating interface design, mechanical design into a cute form in a simple form that is like Botten. Yeah. And yeah, that's how it was made. Yeah, yeah. and it came out great. Um, did you do all of the 3D sculpting yourself? Uh, yes, yes. I did, I'm doing it all myself. Uh, actually, I asked some of my, I have my son to be contributing in this uh, 3D designing process. So I asked him to draw some like pictures yeah. of this robots. And actually, there's a really like small but like simple toy. The first attempt to like oh, just nice. regenerate his drawings into a toy, but this was pretty difficult yeah. to like have the quality to sell. So I saw that I needed to recompose into some form that it's more uh, like uh, fascinating, like some kind of stuff. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was a more rough design before getting into this form, but yeah, it started from my son's drawing, drawing together all those uh, robot faces. And, yeah. Do on the toy that you're holding, do the arms move mm -hmm. or the buttons? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. haven't posted this much yet, but these arms move. And I wanted to make this as kind of like a fidget toy thing. So the buttons are pressable. It's not like isolated buttons or mechanical buttons, but it's like a squeezier, squeezy kind of buttons. So you can just play with your hand while you're doing something. Yeah. It really fits your hand. That's perfect. I love yeah. that. Uh, I really, I can't wait. I, I'm, I really like the idea of like little, um, the simple robot face or skins. Those are always mm -hmm. the most exciting things to see on toys. Do you know any other toy makers? Like, are you friends with other toy makers as well that encouraged you to do this? Actually, I had no toy maker friends, okay. but I was uh, looking into. I was more uh, having passion in lure fishing, mm -hmm. and there's a, also a hand making community in the lure fishing uh, uh, culture. So I first entered uh, this 3D printer to build like 3D printed lures, like fishing lures, mm -hmm. but that didn't fascinate me really much since the thing is not like really designer friendly. I mean, how do I say? It's not that you can design whatever you want. You okay. need to design for the fish. So yeah. it's really restricted. <laughs> so I wanted to move away from that. And I just started uh, toy making. And actually, I don't have any like toy making friends. We interrupted this broadcast of Toys on Tap to bring you this. Meanwhile, in a galaxy of root like treasures. DOV2, we have engine failure. We must crash land on DKE Toy Planet. Oh my, we're doomed. <laughs> Wait! Salvation! Hooray! We're saved in DLP2! Limited edition custom artist made action figures and DKE toys! Check out www.dkatoys.com for a full catalog. Hooray for custom action figures! DKE! But my past career, I have a lot of designers around me. I have built, I, I haven't built myself, but we were doing product planning for some of the Japanese manufacturing company to deliver their new products. So I was always doing product planning and product, some product designing thing. So that experience, I converted that into toy making. So yeah, I'm pretty new to this industry. So I still need to build the community here and like more have a passionate friends about this. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. There's a, a I know a couple. I'll send you their names. I know a couple that oh, are thanks. over there. Yeah, yeah, that's um, cool. But I'm interested too in the Gotcha Gotcha machines. Mm -hmm. um, do you have to buy the whole machine or do you rent mm -hmm. it and then put your toys in it? How does that work over there? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty difficult for me to buy the Gotcha Gotcha thing, really. I mean, it was difficult to find where I could buy those. Mm -hmm. I knew there was a way to rent those gacha gacha machine, but it's gonna be costly. There will be some uh, extra budget running every month, so I didn't want that to happen. And I found out that buying a gacha gacha machine is not like super duper expensive. It's like uh, seven hundred dollars. So you can own one. One. I mean, 
two machine as one tower. That's mm -hmm. like $700. And uh, you can buy from like online retail stores. And the, but uh, you may know, but the gacha gacha or those capsule toy scenes are really growing in Japan because of the COVID. You don't need to meet those store clerks. Uh, they, you just need to have a lot of gacha gacha machine in the store, and people just enjoy buying gacha gacha. There's like huge gacha gacha stores co really coming out in Japan um, these days, like in the train stations or in a lot of large uh, community malls. Wow. And the gacha gacha is like really growing right now. So yeah. it was difficult for me to find. A stock just purchasing one for me so yeah did you um, because they have those types of stores are they aimed mm -hmm. at kids or do they also aim for like adult collectors of toys and stuff uh, I feel these days it's more and more to the adults okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well it's not like really <laughs> cheap anymore and also the figure the level quality of the figure is like really raising in the old days it was like I have a sample with me right now but in the really old days it was easier like this really small eraser kind of plastic figure oh, toy yeah. yeah 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 but right now it's more like um, really complex figure I don't have example of me right now but really like intense design creature toys or like animal or insect toys and some unique toys with uh, like a humor sense like um, well it's it's a crazy thing but you just sell those uh, buttons inside like bus buses I'm not sure if that's familiar but there's like a button you press when you get off the bus uh, mm -hmm. to notify the driver and that kind of button is sold as a toy in the gacha gacha oh, so everything is going like a gacha gacha toy right now yeah and it's always not targeting kids but also targeting adults interesting yeah. Are, and so you said they're getting more expensive um now do they range because that means the typical uh machine here it's probably about mm -hmm. like a two inch circle that's the capsule do yeah, they yeah, get yeah. bigger and bigger uh, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're okay. getting bitter. Yeah. I think I'm using a uh, capsule around uh, 7 centimeters, 7.5 centimeters, mm -hmm. and it's already growing larger. It's like nearly 10 or like 8. Yeah. So, yeah, it's crazy. Wow. So are <laughs> and they... people are like willing to buy those. Yeah, yeah well, they do full size toys in these gotcha gotcha machines. Yeah, it's getting closer to the full-size toys, like those plastic model kits. There are like smaller Gundam plastic model kits that can that could be built by yourself. Yeah, fit inside those capsules. Interesting. And yeah, they're having a lot of, I mean, wow. new uh, improvement. Into so, those. for your toys, this first yeah. toy has um, been released now. And mm -hmm. are you planning on doing, uh, do you think that you have a style of toy? Like, are they all going to mm -hmm. be this robotic style? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, good question. I'm not restricting myself to the robot style. I needed to start from the 3D printer, and I needed to start in a form of a simple design so that I can start quick. So I started from this form. But I also want to do like those creature forms or characteristic, more human-looking forms. And I'm right now, I'm right now using a CAD software to build this, which was my really familiar tool, a 3D CG designing tool for me. But I'm now practicing more like the computer graphics software, like Blenders or ZBrush and those kind of stuff, to build more like high detail toys. So I think this project will continue in a form of having a button in several different design. I think this his face is kind of like an interface, mm -hmm. and these these like components are swappable. Like all those NFT arts are always like composing yeah. different uh, yeah parts of their faces, head and 
that similar thing can be done with button and I'm planning to build like several different designs for a button having this same like form of body but the face has different orientation face has different components different style buttons different style mechanical oh, like, features I love that and yeah are yeah, you going... that kind of a update yeah so will you sure, design behind. new um I guess the question is it when mine get here are you going to design mm -hmm. new buttons and new faces that I can buy those components and then click them on when I get them uh, I haven't planned about like additions to the original ones but that is a good idea as well yeah yeah, yeah. I didn't build this uh in body to be swappable okay. but the arms are at least swappable so <laughs> the first thing I can do is to swap these arms to yeah. more like intense style or stronger style, any style. But yeah, yeah. But I think making it, I mean, compare. Uh, how do I say, customizable to other faces are really interesting as well. So I wanted to take that idea yeah. to my future toys. Absolutely, that yeah. that's your idea now. That yeah, I was excited seeing <laughs> that because we. You know, Toys on Tap talks to artists um, all over the world, and so this is my first artist that I'm having um, from Japan, so I'm excited. And it's a toy no, right. that I haven't seen before because it's mm. it's uh, it's tough to say. Like it's a, it's robotic and simplistic, but it's also like I can a fidget toy, and I love that idea. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel that it's like <laughs> I did a. Uh, well, it was a difficult choice for me as well. I wanted to be neat as I could, but I also wanted to be new to be uh, differentiated from other like selling toys right now. Yeah. So I was choosing which way to go, but I started from this. So yeah. Do you plan on having uh, multiple gacha gacha machines everywhere? Mm -hmm. Uh. Well, gacha gacha machine. Right now, I have two. Like two as one tower okay. and growing a gacha gacha machine uh, I'm not sure but if I have an option to sell other artists or other creators toy on my like gacha gacha machine I might uh, have those gacha gacha machine for rent for other artists to sell those products from themselves I'm not like willing to sell the major uh, coming toys from all those Japanese uh, big uh, toy companies yeah like, things in the ordinary stores or anything. I want this gacha gacha machine to be artist centric. Mm -hmm. So renting them to other artists is one possibility. Actually, I wanted to talk this story, but also this story about the gacha gacha machine is that I'm also planning a collaboration with students in my wife's uh, art school. Mm -hmm. They're like kindergarten students or elementary school students. And I think I can do a similar thing that I did with my son, with those the kids, to make original toy together and have them an experience to sell a toy in their neighborhood. That might sound like a re really interesting experience for yeah. them. Yeah, I like that idea because and yeah, yeah, toys are. Um, I, I think that the toy scene we all see them as art, and so it's really mm. cool to see that you want to work with kids to show them that they can bring their art to life. So with you being so new uh, in the toy mm -hmm. scene, how quickly are you going to start trying to produce your next toy? Mm, well, I'm already starting designing the new interface. Okay. And I'm also like actually doing some attempts for the next like more human, really closer characteristic toys. Oh, yeah. And some attempts for the monster toys it's not like just like a sculpting yeah entering level but i i may have said in the really earlier in the show i'm not a full-time worker for toys mm -hmm. i'm not like a really fast developer so i think for button button this uh new design will come in like uh i cannot say one week but probably in a month i will announce a new design not only one design, but several designs for this button to have like a button family kind of thing. Button family. And for those other lines, I might want to have this by the end of this year. Yeah. I'm not sure if this is going to be the shape, but yeah. 
I want to make a non machine mechanic, uh, non like machine looking toy, but all like a monster looking or a human looking toy. Yeah. Wow, that's that's quick to have all those toys coming. So you um, you work full time. Is this kind of just kind of what you do on nights and weekends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I full timely. I work as a uh, product planner and business planner in a Japanese electronics company, and uh, working there is really interesting too. But the progress is really slow. Mm -hmm. It takes like years to. Have your product coming out to the market, so I wanted to have a quicker action, quicker thing that I could uh, sell to the market or have reactions from the market. So selling toy was one, yeah, way to overcome that uh, issue for me. Yeah, working in a full time company. Yeah. So here's the the question I have: being um, Mm -hmm. Because uh, you started in April, so this is a good, I love asking new toy makers this question. Where do you mm -hmm. want this to go? How big do you want this toy making mm -hmm. to go in your life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if I can enjoy this until the day I die, I would love to enjoy okay. this. Like, even after quitting my job, I may want to have this toy making to my full-time job. And I think... My family is always passionate in making things. My wife is an art school teacher. My son is also loving to make uh, their his own. Like, it's a it's still a cardboard uh, robots or cardboard cars. Or yeah. he's also really enjoying the making, and he's uh, enjoying the making process of this toy. So, I like to build this as a family business. And I'm not sure about how large, but. In the meantime, I would love to have more and more followers on Instagram or having uh, small, uh, not only selling in Gacha Gacha, but owning a small toy store besides my wife's art school is one of my, my main goals right now. Yeah, which is great. And, you know, we, we talked a little bit. We're going to do that giveaway for the three of them when they come here. I'm oh, gonna, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm excited. So you'll get more followers from that and... Um, we'll probably run it the same week that this episode runs. So it'll be mm -hmm. a cool opportunity that people can get to hear you and hear your story. Mm, yeah, I really love that idea. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, tell me, with all the different toys that you see around and all those things, um, I'm always fascinated by uh, the kaiju culture. Mm, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Kaiju, monsters. yeah, yeah. Is yes. that big in the yeah. toy scene there? Uh, yeah, kaiju is really big in the toy scene. I think that's the only and first thing recognized in, uh, as an art toy in Japan. The conversation about art toy, from my point of view, I feel Japanese market is not like really for the art scene. I mean, not many people are buying arts. I think more people or customers for the overseas are buying Japanese toys as an art, mm. even for those kaiju toys. So there's a, I think there's a gap between the uh, international market and the Japanese market. But kaiju is still a really popular in Japan. It's, it wasn't this expensive in the past few years. It's, the price is going <laughs> extremely high. I think the market has acknowledged that as an art toy, so the price is really uh, growing. There are more and more independent artists and I really want to enter that in the future, making kaijus uh, with soft vinyl, those uh, soft vinyl uh, style in the future. So it's one of my goals uh, as well. Yeah. yeah. Make my own kaiju. Yeah. Um, it, you said that you think there's a gap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think that gap is? Mm, I think the consumer mind is the biggest difference. Uh, those kaiju or these easy soft V toys. I have one Ultraman besides me. Mm, like these, that. yeah, these toys weren't like really expensive from the past. It's like a really daily toys. It's was, it's a form of a really cheap toy in Japan, but now it's growing ex extremely expensive. Not in, not all people are like welcoming that. I feel people, well, at the same time, they are like 
selling art soft be in really like pricey range expensive range but at the same time there are like really high quality uh, soft be toys coming from Japanese uh, toy manufacturers with higher quality and I think that comparison having a cheap and really high detail toy and expensive but like independent artists uh, handmade toys are more expensive that kind of comparison is I think really unique yeah. and people in Japan didn't regard these toys to be art we didn't recognize this as an art ourselves I feel uh, this was first recognized as an art from the overseas I mean international market uh, recognized these soft beat toys as an art toy I think China or Taiwan or Hong Kong there are more leading the market about the art toy, softy toys, and kind of Japanese market is kind of like to uh, is going to follow up that, but it's still uh, on the growing process. I feel so the consumer mind isn't like yeah. Yeah, would you say that the the overseas market has changed how um, the people in Japan view Safubi completely or soft vinyl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the mindset is really important. I mean, the concept of soft beat toys as an art toy, it's the idea is imported from the international market. We didn't recognize this as an art toy ourselves, I feel. Mm. Yeah, that's I think good. that's a huge yeah change happening these days. Interesting, interesting. And I feel more and more people are noticing that and more and more like independent Japanese soft meat makers are growing. A lot of newcomers like me is entering the market. Mm, yeah. Do you think there's a lot of toy makers that are independent now that are entering the Japanese toy scene? Yeah, 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 exactly. Interesting. I love that. I love, I love hearing about independent artists growing all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what I love to do as we close out this episode, what I love to do with every toy artist is um, give you the opportunity to plug all the stuff that you do and who you are and what you sell and when you sell it and where we can buy it. So you want to plug all of that information? My name is uh, uh, Hitoshi. I run a toy store called High Toys with my family. And I have a Instagram called High Toys, and that's gonna be the main information resource. And I also have a online store and a local Gacha Gacha machine, which is a capsule machine in Tokyo, only very limited in Tokyo. But I am planning to have an online uh, remote kind of a purchase way to buy a Gacha Gacha remotely on site. I will like roll the Gacha Gacha and ship it to you. And also, I will have like a complete set of the Gacha Gacha kit sold in on the online sir. So if anybody has an interest, please check my Instagram or website. I would be really happy to see your uh, reactions to the toys. Thanks. Hitoshi, thank you so much for being on Toys on Tap. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Of course, of course. Yeah, I can't wait. I look forward to hearing and seeing more from you. Thank you. I will. To keep up my great work. <laughs> yeah. Try to come in this to a second show. <laughs>